How did you first come to know Johnny Weicker? Uh, I came to the shows as a journalist with the Florence Times Tri-Cities Daily, and uh, one of my first things was to start a gossip column about what was going on in the local studios. And the very first person I interviewed was uh, John Weicker. And we became friends, and it went from there. What was your first impression of him? He was probably the most talented and creative person I'd ever met. And uh, he could make uh, anybody believe in him. Yeah, and that was, what, 40 years ago? That was, uh, yes, uh, spring of 72. That's a long time. Long time to be friends. It really is. Um, so as the years progressed, he, uh, he made recordings, things like that. In the last 10 or 12 years, he had a mighty field of vision. What was, what was that, that kind of history? How did that go? Uh, the Mighty Field of Vision was an ad lib in an Eddie Hinton song that we did in uh, the 85. Eddie had some issues and he had um, fallen from grace, so to speak, and uh, Johnny found him uh, sitting on the bus stop bench in Decatur, brought him in to his, um, his father's hardware store and had some empty offices above the hardware store. And, he took him in there and after a few days called me and asked me to come help. And so we created uh, basically a publishing company for the six songs that he had that had been unpublished. We created a record label and uh, we created a management company and, uh, and got Eddie somewhat back on his feet. The Mighty Field of Vision was an ad lib in one of um, Eddie's songs but it seemed so indicative of what we were trying to do and to create not only for Eddie, but for others as well, that uh, it was a good name for the, for the, what became the overall project. Yeah. And now, now, how, it seems interesting that you brought him up and Eddie Hinton at the same time. Uh, from what I gather, uh, uh, he was extremely talented but the, you know him and Eddie together, they had a lot of a lot of flaws. They were kind of rough around the edges. Is that you think that was kind of well, fateful or something or what? Uh, in a way, Johnny was in the process of trying to uh, make a comeback when he discovered Eddie, and uh, he brought me in, and basically we tried to you know, revamp Eddie's career. We did a pretty good job of it, actually. Our initial goal was to get Eddie healthy and well enough that we could get him back into his mother's care, and we, in fact, did that after a few years. He moved back to Birmingham to live with his mother. What was so special? What, I mean, it's hard to ask a question like that, so give me, give me some special qualities of John Weicker. Creativeness. He could, he could uh, and he had the ability to, to inspire people, you know. We did a, a lot of things over the years that were just totally incomprehensible to most people in the music business. We took basically a couple hundred dollars and created a record publishing company, management company, and got the record out in seven European countries. And Johnny was a big part of that. He was the inspiration to a lot of people that got that going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was an inspiration. That's, that's a good way of putting it. Uh, he had his demons? To some extent, yes. Well, that's the, I guess sometimes that's one of the things that goes along with super creativity is, is sometimes a little rough around the edges there. Um, what about his friends? Uh, I guess you, I, I know that earlier this morning you were talking to Kelvin about him. What, what have you talked much to his friends about um, his death? Yes, uh, quite a few of them have called. Uh, Bonnie Bramlett called early yesterday. Um, I've talked to uh, Michael Buffalo Smith, who is uh, in South Carolina, and he has a radio show that Johnny was on frequently. It's an internet radio program. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are concerned about Johnny and have been over the years uh, because he was, you know, loose cannon. You never knew when he was going to 
break through the guardrail and fall into the bottomless pit. And uh, it was just uh, always that, for, I, I like to describe Johnny as the, the um, barnstormer who took the biplane up as high as it'd go and then he'd, he'd point it into a dive and dive straight towards the earth and pull out at the last second. And he did that again and again and again over his life. And, um, you know, that's kind of what you expected out of him. Does it, do you think that that was a, a great positive in terms of his legacy or was it a great negative? Yes. That, that, okay. It was, in a lot of ways, it was a great positive. It kind of left me hanging a time or two. What do you think is going to be Johnny's legacy? The fact that he was he never gave up ever you know he was always going to get that next hit song and he had plenty but he was always going to get one more and he was going to put out one more record and he was going to you know be the star uh, attraction again so he never never quit never gave up uh -uh. even recently no i don't think so i mean I, I had conversations with him several times this past week and it was always, he was going to get back in the studio. He had some new songs that he had written and he was going to record and, and he was just going to go forward. From a personal standpoint, what does the loss of Johnny Weicker mean to you? It's hard to say yet. <laughs>